season. We are senior move managers. We are celebrating 14 years in business. My background is interior design. So as Teresa said, I'm very good at space planning. My clients don't always like what I'm telling them, but we're very honest about it because we wanna make sure that whatever you decide to do or wherever you decide to go, that you're safe, that you get around safely and you're not bumping into furniture and things. Um, so we're gonna start. Uh, let me see if I can get this right. Uh, it's never too early to start uh, thinking about what you're gonna do. Uh, and basically the best thing to do would be to think about it as if you're going to be doing a spring house cleaning, but cleaning out everything. And most of my clients say they're overwhelmed. They don't know where to start. So I would say start with one item, one closet, one cabinet, one drawer. And I copied this off of um, a, a website because you can make up your own 30 day challenge if you want. But it's so much easier if you just decide you're gonna do one drawer and start on that. And you'd be surprised when you get done that, you'll go to the next one. You won't realize how far you're along you can get. Um, but, the, but the trick is make sure that when you take everything out of that drawer, you don't put everything back in. And so you need to have a box or something so that you, when you take it out, you can put it someplace else. And um, they have asked me today to talk a little bit about estate sales too. And so it's difficult because when you're downsizing, you wanna get rid of everything. But if you wanna have an estate sale, you sort of need to keep it. So I was compartmentalizing things where I thought maybe you could take two drawers and sort them out and maybe one drawer put stuff that you don't ever want to use anymore. And then the second drawer is the drawer that you're going to keep using. So the same thing with cabinets, because I can't tell you how many times we end up taking that great big heavy mixer. And then when we get to the new community or their new residence, I put it on the very bottom of the cabinet. Well, that mixer weighs 20 pounds. You're never going to be able to get it out of that cabinet. So we need to kind of think about these things as we're sorting out our cabinets. Are we really going to use this again? Do we really need it? Ask yourself some tough questions. You know, this particular family had five crock pots. Why do you need five crock pots? Um, you know, is it something that you could borrow from a neighbor or your family? And I used to argue all the time because my clients wanted to take their great big, um, the thing they cook their turkey roasters in, a turkey roaster. But you're probably never gonna cook a turkey roaster again, cook a turkey again, I'm sorry. So think about this, ask yourself, are you going to have Thanksgiving with family? Are they gonna be cooking? You don't need to keep all of that stuff. When we're moving into a smaller space or just cleaning things out, you need to be able to, to be able to see it, to see where you're gonna, where it, it goes and make it easy to find. This was a garage where we did an, a, a sale and this was the only time that one of our workers walked in and turned around and walked out. He was so overwhelmed, he just, he didn't know where to start. And we started the same way we start everything and we ask you to start with one corner, one shelf, and we just took our time and worked our way around the room. And we had boxes that we put stuff in. So when you're sorting stuff, you wanna keep like things with like things. Being organized is not, in, and staying organized is not inherited. We have to work at it. Find a solution that maybe works for you. We found gobs of jewelry in this garage. Why you would keep jewelry in a garage is beyond me, um, but, we put it all in a box and we ended up taking it in the house and putting it all together. So you wanna sort like things with like things. Everything should have a home. Um, when I cleaned out one of my cabinets in the kitchen, one of my drawers, I found six coffee scoops, but my husband uses a tablespoon to make coffee. So why do I, why were they in there? It's just a thing to you know, think about it as you go along. Mm. Never be embarrassed about what you have. We all have way too much and it, 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 you just have to take your time and, and organize it. Pull it out, see what you have. 
I have boxes for my kids. And, you know, when they were here, I, I said, this is your box. You need to go through this. And my son said, well, why? This is, but it's yours. You need to go through it. It's not mine to be able to throw away. So you have to argue with your kids. You, you don't need to be the place where the kids store all of their stuff. In the kitchen, your pantry, your fridge, your freezers, you wanna make sure everything is up to date. You wanna store things together, like things together so that you can find them easily. And you wanna check expiration dates. And for me, I get aggravated because I know sometimes I just bought this and I brought it home and put it on the, on the shelf. And the next thing I know, it's out of date. I think sometimes the, the grocery stores don't always check all their dates. And so it makes it harder at the store, but you kind of need to check on what you're buying to make sure that it has a date because you're not going to use it right away. And again, on spices, these are spices I've taken out of my clients' houses, and one of them had 59 cents on the bottom of it. So when was the last time that you bought a spice for 59 cents? The, it, the only food that lasts forever is honey. Everything else does not last. And I can't tell you the amount of liquor we throw out, um, you know, the vinegar, these kinds of things. The last time that McCormick made one of these cans was 15 years ago. So if you have a McCormick spice can in your closet, it's over 15 years old. Just giving you something to think about. Let's talk a little bit about space planning. I know you wanna take as much as you can, but let's be reasonable and be comfortable. So we need to kind of talk about the space of where you're moving to. I had one lady that um, she gave her family a terrible time because she had this big desk and she really wanted to take it. And I'm very honest about things. I'm not gonna tell you everything's gonna be fine and it's gonna fit and then it's not. So she argued and argued with her family until finally I said to her, okay, I can take that desk, but then you can't take a couch. So do you want your sofa or do you want the desk? Which one do you wanna take? So you really, again, you need to start thinking about some of these things, you know, do you have to have it or is it something you would just like to have or, or is it something that maybe you could do without? So those are kind of some of the things you need to think about. Also, when you're downsizing, you have to remember if you're in a house that you've lived in 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you probably have four bedrooms and you use each one of those bedrooms as your closet. So when you're moving, you're not gonna have that kind of linear feet to place your clothes in. So it's hard to go through your closet because a lot of the things in your closet are sentimental, but we've gone through closets where people have three different sizes. You can't wear all three different sizes. You really need to start to make some decisions and get rid of some of the things that you have. So um, there are all kinds of places that people like are looking to, do, to, um, to get a job and they need clothes. So when you're giving your things away, think about it as you're helping somebody else. Now, if you're doing an estate sale, again, you might wanna put things aside so that they could be sold because we do sell purses and shoes, boots, those kinds of things not as much in clothing unless it's something unusual. But when you're gonna move into a community, you wanna make sure that you are taking things that you absolutely want. And you may have to switch out summer and winter. So you may have to put some things in a box under your bed or in a second closet someplace. So as you're looking at your things and going through your own closets, are, is it really something you're gonna wear? Next, I would say get generous. You know, when we started 14 years ago, the family would fight over their parents' belongings. And so we would have to hold fake auctions or we would have to, you know, play a game to try and see who got what. My mom had us put our name underneath different things if we wanted it. Today, you have to beg your children to take anything. They don't want anything that you have. 
So what I convinced my children of, I asked them to keep something as a memory. I told them it didn't have to be expensive. It was just something that when they saw it, they could think about it as this was grandma's or this belonged to grandpa and I used to help him do whatever it was. My son, I convinced to take a picture that my mother-in-law used on her table. Every time we had dinner there, she put water in it, used it. So it was a memory for him when he sees that. So good luck with that. I did have one lady that I thought was very clever. She had a collection of cranberry glass. And I said, why are we packing all of this? Why do you need it? And she said, I've decided as I get invited to my niece's graduation or my niece's birthday parties, anybody in the family, I'm going to give them one of these pieces of cranberry glass. Because I guess if you give it as a gift, they can't say no. So that's just something to think about. A lot of times when we move our clients, they want us to put things back the way they were. So this particular client put everything that she wanted in her china cabinet to keep, and she arranged it. We took a picture of it. When we, when we arrived at the new community, we unpacked it and set it up the way she wanted it. This is a picture of one of our estate sale setups. We want to put everything together, like with like. So we feel like when we, when we show it like this, it's much easier to buy it or sell it. Um, as people get a very good idea of how things are, um, how things are. This lady had a collection of teacups that she wanted to get rid of. So we showed them all together. And this was our china table. We didn't have a lot of china, but we did have some silver plate. And it does sell, but it doesn't sell for very much. And that's the thing that you need to think about when you wanna do an estate sale. Everybody says, oh, I have so much um, furniture. We have beautiful dining room sets and I have lots of antiques, but those things aren't worth a lot of money. I mean, I, if your children don't want it, then other people's children don't want it either. So it's really hard to sell. We sell it, but we don't sell it for very much. I worked for in furniture before I decided to have my own business in interior design. And I know what you bought for those, what you paid for your dining room set. But we're lucky to get several hundred dollars for it. The kids today don't have dining rooms. They use them as playrooms or offices. So we do sell it, but it's just very difficult. And I showed you a picture of Hummels before that um, when I said, let's get generous, we can sell them. But these are things that you bought because you enjoyed them. You've enjoyed them over the years. You didn't buy them as an investment. And that's the way you have to look at it. Because we do sell the Hummels, we do sell the Yadro, but not for very high prices. It just depends. I can get more for a set of Legos than I can for a piece of Yadro. Let's talk about saving your memories. Everybody has loads of pictures and you can divide them up however you want. I happen to have three children. So I put boxes together and I have a box for each one of the kids. But again, when you're saving your memories, you need to write on the back of them because if you don't know who they are, they're gonna throw them away, the pictures, they won't save them. So you wanna say, this is great aunt Martha and this is mom's brother Charles or however you want to do it but you want to take your time and go through things and I'll tell you it's a lot of fun to go through the pictures with even the kids as you're separating remember this picnic we had with Uncle Joe and you know whatever happened during that picnic um, but it's uh, my mother gave us each a box I have a girlfriend who was very nice and made memory books for each one of her kids I wasn't that nice. I just gave three boxes away. So you can do as, as you choose or has, you have as much time to do that. Books, everybody has lots of books and you need to, the, books are very heavy to, to move. You don't have a lot of space for them. What the best thing to do is to go through and to donate them. I have people that try and take them down to 
the half price books and you get about $2 for lugging them down there. I used to work at the library and we used to have book sales four times a year and we would sell all the books that were donated. And with that money, we were able to buy things that the library needed. It wasn't in their budget for that year. So we used to fund all the summer programs for the kids. We bought them a computer that they needed for the um, one of their study rooms. So there's all kinds of things. It's really nice to be able to donate them. So think about that. We had a neighbor who had so many books that his ceiling was falling in from being so heavy. Papers, I hate papers. I'm not good with them. I let them go too long. And I, you really, there's only three things you can do with paper and that's file them, toss them and act on them. We don't have to keep everything that we have. I know I keep way too many papers. Um, you have to think about how hard is it to get it again? Is there really a reason to keep this paper? What's the worst thing that can happen if I get rid of it? 80% of whatever we file, we never access again. So think about that. I did leave with uh, um, the ladies a paper from bankrate.com and it tells you how long you should keep financial papers. So I've asked them to email it to everybody so that you can start going through papers. You want, one of the hardest things I think is all the papers that you need to shred. And so if you're somebody that really has kept files for years and years and years, then you wanna call one of the shredded people and let them bring one of their bins over instead of you spending all that time shredding it. They have a locked bin, you can put all the paper in the locked bin and they can even uh, shred it for you right in front of your house. Sometimes your bank has a shred day. Um, there's other places around. It's just that, again, papers for me are the worst. And this I had to put in because I, I laughed when I saw it. This is what to me, like everybody's working from home right now. And so two or three people might be in an office trying to figure out what they're doing, maybe having a Zoom call. Um, but again, go through one thing at a time and you'd be surprised how, how fast you'll get rid of things. Cleaners, paint, toxins, electronics, medications. These are things that you need to get rid of, but you need to get rid of them responsibly. Um, my community every uh, twice a year has a, a, an electronics toxins pickup where you can take all these things and they'll take care of it and they even tread on those days. Medications you can drop off at the pharmacy. Uh, there's places, um, I, my community takes these meds twice a year as well. Let me tell you about paint. If you leave the cane open and it dries out, you can throw it in the trash can. Or you can also use kitty litter to dry it out and then you can throw it in the trash can. What I'd like to do is tell you a little bit more about how we work, because I sort of went over that kind of quickly. Whereas a senior move manager, we're going to help you with the whole process. So we want to come in and we will pack for you. We will help you with the movers. We will unpack and set up your whole community, your whole apartment. We can do as much or as little of that as you would like. Um, be happy with what you've done. Reward yourself when you get done with your drawers or drawer doors or your cabinets. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my thought. You're gonna to need to create a list of people and your utilities you need to notify. Um, ma start making a list out ahead of time of all of your banking things and um, who you need to notify if you are going to move. The other thing is make sure and be proactive about things. You get to make the decisions that suit you the best. A lot of times we delay all these decisions and then I can tell you the kids are gonna make the decisions for you and I can guarantee you they're not gonna make the decisions that you want. So make sure you have all of these things in place. The other thing is I find that when I'm working with some of my clients, 
they don't have their paperwork in order. So if you need to make sure your wills are in order, make sure all you have all of your um, financial things in order, make sure it's easy for somebody to find these things, make sure you have your di advanced directives in order and anything else that you might need so that your kids aren't making the decisions for you, you're making them yourself. I guess I'm sorry, I talked too fast. I went a little faster than I thought I would. Is there anything that I didn't touch on that you would like to know about? If anyone has any questions, they can enter them into the chat. I can give a statistic that we wear about 20% of our clothes 80% of the time. So as you're going through your closet, you might want to think about that. Do we have any questions? I'm not seeing any just yet. I know one time I had trouble finding the chat box. Do they know where it is? So if you're using a laptop, it would be at the bottom of the screen. And if you're unable to find it, if you wanted to unmute yourself and ask your question. What I have a question. Are, are you there? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. I I have some crystal that uh that you drink from that type of crystal. And um I've got a huge set of it that's very expensive and it's probably about $4,000 worth. And what would be the best way to get rid of it <laughs> thank you for asking <laughs> that and that's a great i question. know i can't get anywhere near the value for it i'm not yeah. but but you know what have you enjoyed that crystal do you oh, ever yes. use it oh, well, oh I, not, we, not anymore i did but well, what we it. say is you know i have a lot of my clients that have waterford and it's not as expensive as some of the other um, crystal, but right. when we're packing, I ask them to take that and use that for their every day. What okay. do you say? What are you saving it for? You know, most of the time what? they take the glasses out of their kitchen cabinet that have those film the film on it. Yes. And, you know <laughs> what? Why? Because that's right. the other thing. You know, we say let's take our china, let's take our china and use it. And they they always say, well, what if the rim? What if some of the gold comes off? So what? When I right. go to sell this, you know, like I'm selling Waterford for about eleven dollars a glass that is still being sold in the store for seventy dollars. Exactly. Because right. again, the young kids don't want it. So why not use it? Why not let's now? Maybe you don't want to take all of it with you because you won't be able to, to do that. But let's right. take a selection. If you drink wine, let's take some wine glasses. If you want a margarita, take that one. And let's use the water glasses. You know, right. as long as they're not too heavy. Some people have really heavy things. And as we get older, sometimes that really heavy glass is just not comfortable to hold. Right. I mean, that's a right. great question because we try and take as much of that as we can just because we can't get a good price for it. Sometimes yes. your kids will take it, you know, and maybe, again, this is something that you would really like them to have. What I say is be careful how you ask the question. You're not asking the question right. You know, if you say, I would really like you to have some of this, you uh -huh. know, how many pieces do you want? You're not saying, do you want it or not? You're saying, how much of it would you like? <laughs> right, right. You know, 
And so you have to learn how to ask the right questions. And I know that sounds terrible, but. No, um, but you're right. I understand. You know, so, um, I mean, we try and be very realistic because I'm not going to come in and say, I can get a thousand dollars for this. I right. Can't. The things that you want to throw away are the things that sell. I mean, we have yes. people come in and want your half open bottles of shampoo. They right. Want all your cleaning <laughs> supplies, all those toothbrushes that you get at the dentist office that oh, I can sell for a dollar a piece all day long. Oh. But some of these really pretty pieces, and you know, I mean, I even call my daughter and I'll say, tell your friends I'm having an estate sale. I uh -huh. have some beautiful case good pieces. Does anybody need something? Or I have some really pretty wing chairs or chairs. You know, even if you get it recovered, this is good stuff. This right. is all wood. You know, most of them today don't care. They just want They really them. don't. You know, I mean, right. you know, I tell them, and I know this is awful, paint the damn thing. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, this is mm -hmm. a really nice piece of furniture. Paint it. Make it look right. a little different. But you've got something that's going to last forever. But they don't, that's not their mentality. They don't care right. if it lasts forever. So, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough. It is really tough. Um, yes. We very, we it's really the same way with uh, silverware. Like, I've got Grand Baroque. And, you know, it sits in its box. <laughs> it's you know and i think that's a good idea just i think i should just start using it it's absolutely. my every day absolutely absolutely right. cuz i can sell the everyday stuff i mean i don't get right. much for it but i can sell it you know right. or mismatched pieces the, the the same thing so right. i mean i've i've changed my philosophy on that in the last year or two just from what we're seeing of people buying and it really yes. makes me very excited to see some of the young people coming into our sales now. Some of them are uh -huh. starting to get it where, you know, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars for things that are very nice. Um, right. But I, I have I have three children and one of them will not use anything that was somebody else's. So oh. I don't know where they got that mentality from. The other one is fine with it. You know, she'll say, my daughter needs a new dress or mom, help me find it, you know, or let me know when you have this because, and it makes me, it, it, I think it's great. I think it's great. Yes, that way you search for things, for, right. <laughs> yes, I think that that sounds wonderful. That's great advice. I appreciate it. Oh, no, thank you. It's a great question. We've got a few more. Oh, good. So I'd like to know about when to move or sell or buy. <laughs> well, right now, real estate is going really quickly. One of the girls that works for me, her children have been living with her because they've been saving up to buy a house. They have put in so many bids and they have put in bids over um, what the asking price is and they still haven't gotten a house. People, are, um, people have cash and they're buying very quickly or they're 10, 20, 30,000 over the asking price which is absolutely ridiculous, but that's what's happening. So it is a good time to sell right now, but let me just say that we are doing estate sales right now. We're booking for the end of June. I mean, we have that many backed up already. So, and I don't, we, real, realtors give us a lot of our business, but I don't, you don't, you don't have to listen to your realtor number one. Um, and, and I know they'd be really upset if they heard me say that, but, you know, sometimes it used to be where they would say, come in, you'd have to put granite down to sell your house. You'd have to paint everything white. You'd have to, you don't do any of that anymore. You don't have to do anything. People really want to buy these houses. It makes it very easy to sell. This is really a seller's market. So you don't need to do all those things to get it sold because it used to be too. They would want us to come in. We would pack all of their, our clients' stuff, put it in the garage so that they could stage the house. You don't have to do any of that anymore. They like to try and do that. I mean, other than getting your stuff out of the way, you need to take all the pictures, all the personal stuff, make sure your closets are fairly empty. Um, you know, so those kinds of things need to be packed up. 
But other than that, you, the houses are going very fast, very fast. So I had somebody call me two weeks ago and say, we're interested in a state sale. We don't need it right away. We need it in about four weeks. Well, that's right away because we are so far out. So as you're planning your things, think about that. Did I answer your question? Molly, wait, let me do another one. Um, can you give price ranges? For what? For I think your services. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's why we're talking about two different things here. So I have to stay on track. Um, yes, we charge by the hour. And we charge by the hour because we feel it's more fair to you. If I come in and do a consultation, I walk through that house with you and we go through things as um, what maybe you should take. Once I see where you're going, like the first thing is find your floor plan. Find the place you wanna go and make sure the floor plan suits you two bedrooms, some places have three bedrooms, whatever you need, an office. And then when we go through your house, it's easier to make decisions. So if you're trying to decide, you're thinking about selling your house, but you don't know where you're going, all you're doing is spinning your wheels. So when I do a consult, we talk about all these things. And then as much as you can do, it's less for us to do, it's cheaper for you. That's why we feel it's, it, it's much um, much better if we charge by the hour. It's more fair because if you can go through your things yourself, then you're not paying us to do it. But if I have to stand in your bedroom closet for a day and a half and make you try on clothes because I know those three different sizes aren't going to fit you, um, then that's what we have to do. So we actually charge $65 an hour per person. And so we pack in one day and we move the next. So it's only a two day process. So it doesn't cost any more if there are three people packing or four people packing because it's by the hour. And we do not charge for boxes and paper. I don't want to nickel and dime you. So we don't charge for paper and boxes. And the movers that we use provide wardrobe boxes at no charge. We, we, don't, we don't make any money off of our movers. We just like our movers because they're very good to us and our clients. And so when we get to our new community and we find something doesn't quite fit exactly as we thought, they're willing to move things around two or three times if need be, um, which is great. So do that's books how we work. Okay. Do books tend to sell in an estate sale? Yes and no. We have people that come in when we open the door and they all have their their phone with some sort of an app on it because a lot of people today sell books online and so they come in and go through all the books and they look up all the numbers so yes we do sell books um but we also look up books we don't we mostly do not guess at an estate sale on a price people find that we're pretty reasonable about our pricing and just to let you know i sold three sets of legos for $1,000. Um, they were the Star Wars Legos. But I looked them up every day for a week and the price changed daily. So it just depends on what people are collecting. And we recognize things. We had a small black vase, maybe about four inches tall, that an artist had her paintbrushes in, in one of our estate sales. And we looked at the bottom of it and it was a signed piece by a New Mexico artist. And so when we started the estate sale, this gentleman walked right in and went right out to the artist studio and he was right back. And he said, oh, he said, I saw this piece. He said, uh, you know, it was, uh, um, it had paintbrushes in it. And I said, oh, you mean the piece right here next to me? Because it was $400. But people look at things and they think, oh, they don't know what they're doing. So. Once in a while, something gets by us, but we we check the book prices because a lot of the kids' books are bringing eight, ten, twelve dollars, and so we're marking them that way. Normally, at a state sale, hardback books are three dollars and a paperback's a dollar, but then we have a section of books where we have them marked higher. So at the end of the estate sale, it might sell for half price, but a twenty-four dollar book is selling for twelve and not for a dollar fifty. 
Does that make sense? Okay. Someone's asking, when is the best time for an estate sale? Should it be before moving or after selling the house? It has to be after you move. You do not want to be there during an estate sale. If people know it's your place, they're asking you about pricing. They're asking you, can they have a reduction? It's terrible. You really don't want to be there. I mean, they're in, in your face wanting, you know, how much off is this? They're doing that to us and it's not our stuff. Um, it should be after you move. Twice during an estate sale, we sold the house. At this point, you have to kind of decide with your realtor. The realtor wants you to put, your, put it on the market as fast as you can because then they sell it and they get their money. And I get that. But you also need time to clean it out. And so if the things are selling so quickly right now, you might want to have the estate sale before you sell the house. That way it can be cleaned out of everything. The one we're doing right now, the parents died. It's very unusual. Most of our estate sales are for people who are still alive. But you know, after they moved, we take care of everything for them. And then at the end of the estate sale, we actually have a buyout guy. We found him and he is worth his weight in gold because he will maybe give us $100, which people say only $100, but he'll come in and take everything that's left. So he'll clean out the garage, he'll clean out everything. If we feel that there's something that should have sold and didn't, we'll pack it up and take it to a different estate sale, which is a pain in the neck for us. But we feel again, it's more fair to our clients. We try and do the estate sales for mostly our clients because when we started our business, we only did moving. We helped our clients with their moves, but they asked us if we would do the estate sale for them because they trusted us. So we have evolved and learned over the past six, eight years of doing the estate sales, what works best. And honestly, you won't believe it, but what I can sell in Fort Worth, I can't sell in Flower Mill. And what I can sell in Dallas, I'm not selling in Louisville. Though so some places really like antiques better than others. Some places want Western stuff more. It, it, it's it's mind boggling the, the what you sell and don't sell. Okay, we've got quite a few more questions here. So when is the best time of year to sell? Anytime's a good time. Not necessarily a holiday because that makes it tough. You know, people are going on vacation. Um, although this year has been very crazy. We did one a few weeks ago and we had so many people. I think just people wanted to get out of the house. You know, they were very happy. People are getting their shots. I got mine. And uh, so um, I think they're ready. Okay. So right now, anytime. I love this question from John. Do you have some tips on how to separate the emotion out of parting with your things? Like what brings you joy now versus the joy it has brought in the past? Well, I'll tell you, I do. Because growing up, I used to make wine with my grandfather. And um, when he passed away, I got the wine press. Well, I'm from Philadelphia area. And that wine press probably weighed a thousand pounds. And so I stored it in my brother-in-law's garage for a really long time until I finally decided I have a picture of it. I do have my memories and I gave it to my nephew because there was no way I could get it to Texas. So there are certain things that you do have your memories, you know, take a picture of it, right? Even if you write a little, you know, put a photograph with maybe a little talk or, you know, we, we used this when we did this, or, you know, some people like to write. So write yourself a little note and put it in a book. You know, you can store the book a lot easier than you can, you can store a wine press. Great. What is the best way to get rid of tools and other garage items? Oh my gosh, tools sell. Tools sell in a garage, in an estate sale. And the difference between a garage sale and a estate sale is because in a garage sale, everybody thinks everything is a dollar. And um, this, an estate sale, we hold inside the house. But the nice part about having tools in the sale is it brings in the men. And so we'll have couples come and the men will spend their time in the garage, you know, getting, coming out with stuff I never even saw that we was in there and we priced it. Um, but they, they go through everything and find stuff. And then the women have time to do their thing inside the house. 
So yeah, tools always sell. Does good jewelry like pearls, jade, opals, do they sell? They do, and we have cases for our jewelry. Um, I used to buy some wholesale jewelry and I used to import pearls. So not as much as you think. If you have a family member that you would like to give it to, you know, if it means more or even a good friend, you know, it's probably better. A lot of times um, I take a lot of this stuff, the 14 karat gold and the sterling silver, I have a jeweler that I work with and we'll go and we talk about it. Um, how much is he going to give me if I sell it to him? Or how much can I ask for it if I'm going to put it in my case? A lot of times, I mean, people steal stuff. So you have to be really careful. I have to have somebody at that case the whole time showing the pieces. We do have people that come in for silver and gold. And when we do a reduction at the end of our sale, we do not reduce the gold. And we would not, you know, we don't reduce the, some of the silver pieces because I can get those prices if I have to melt it. I don't like to do that, but you know, sometimes, sometimes the stuff is really tarnished or a lot of times you have gold chains that are, um, have kinks in them, things like that. Sometimes a ring that's just not, it's not in right now. My kids hate when I say that, but it's not something that people are going to buy. And we do take it and uh, they, they pay us for it. And we have a gentleman we've been working with for a really long time that's reputable. That's the thing about it is you really need to make sure you're working with somebody reputable. And if you want to do it yourself, I would take it to two or three different places almost in the same day and find out what they're giving you. Because some uh, do penny weight, some do grams, some measure it different ways. And then you can't, you know, you're not, they're not paying for the stones. So you just have to be very careful. How about coins, stamps, and other collections? Coins sell too. We look up those things. Um, I, I will give you a hint. Um, if any of you were ever on eBay and you look up, um, I had somebody say they had a video of a Walt Disney video from, I don't know, one of their movies. And it was, you know, it was going on there for about, I don't know, $500. And I said, but, you know, you can ask anything you want, but what did it sell for? And if you go to if you go to eBay and you look up on the top hand side, it'll have a filter or go all the way down the side and it'll say sold. And then you can look up sold items. And when you're in the sold items, it'll come up in green. So if if the money, if if somebody's say trying to sell a wine glass and it shows that they're, uh, it's $5 and it's in black, that's what they're asking. If it's in green, that's what it's sold for. And that'll kind of tell you, we, um, we belong to, we subscribe to uh, a company over online that helps us look up items that are hard to find. And then we also do a lot of lookup on states uh, um, on eBay because that's where people are buying and selling. So I, had, I looked up uh, records sell very well, albums. And for right now, I mean, it's hard if you have all of those in Crosby, um, Addie Page, Mitch Miller. But, but now a lot of times my families are selling their kids records. And those are things that are more hard rock, um, you know, earth, wind and fire, maybe. Those are selling for a lot of money. I look them up. And it takes a long time, but at the last sale, we um, probably did about $1,500 just in records. Um, excuse me. Um, sorry. So um, coins sell, records sell. We, and we always tell our people looking at the coins, they will not be reduced. Money is money, and we're not selling it for any less than what we have on there. Uh, guns sell. We um, just had a, a sale with guns uh, that we had a 1903 gun that the military used and they took it out of commission. And uh, so we had to tell people it was just a collector's item. Um, so, um, but we sold it, we sold it for $1,200. So we, we spend a lot of time looking stuff up. We are probably not the cheapest for estate sales. I think we're one of the best because we do take our time and do it right. Um, but that's just my opinion. <laughs>
Um, how about worthy.com? Have you heard of them? What do you know about them? Say it again. Worthy. I don't know it. I'm not familiar with it. They, we look, um, the one we subscribe to and that we pay is called Worth Point. Um, and they do give you a seven day trial. Um, so the, what I like about that is it goes back to like 2001 even. So we can really look up and see how things sold over the years. What's difficult is that in like a two day times period, I looked up something and I don't remember if it was an album or what it was, but it sold one day for a dollar and the next day for $31. And so, you know, I said to my husband, how do I price this? So we sort of just went in the middle because I wasn't sure, you know, we look at like for the records, I have to look at each record to see how clean they are. We just did a sale in Fort Worth and he was a jazz, um, he had a whole collection on jazz and blues, a, a large record collection, a large CD collection. And he even had um, track tapes, uh, what do you call them? Eight track uh, cassette tapes. We sold all of them and we never sell cassettes. So again, it just depends on what it is and how good it looks. Does your mover happen to work in California? <laughs> no, but I have a, I belong to a national organization. I don't know if you can see that on the bottom. Um, it's called NASM, the National Association of Senior Move Managers, people all over the country who do what we do. So a lot of times I will pack somebody here and then somebody in California will unpack them or vice versa. We have a lot of people that come in from out of state because the kids live here and the parents, you know, live someplace else and they need to come be closer to the kids. So I get calls from Austin and we've done Michigan and I've done California before. Um, sometimes when we're doing cross country like that, you have to be careful. You don't want to take quite so much stuff because it's, it's costly to do that. But yes, we can work that out. And we work with long distance movers all the time. Okay. Well, it looks like we have run out of questions. Well, I really appreciate it. I am so sorry I went through this so fast, but I, I, the, the questions were really good. And I hope I answered your questions. And I do have my um, website at the bottom of the page and you could ask questions on that and I can certainly answer them for you. Thank you, Carol Ann. It's very informative information. We appreciate you sharing these tips with us. So Carol at Autumn Leaves, Kim at Parkwood Retirement, and Karen at Signature Point will be reaching out to you, um, sharing the document that Carol Ann mentioned during the presentation today. And uh, we'll also include with that email, um, Carol Ann's contact information. So thank you very much for joining us and have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.